Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bolt Breakdowns uh, over here on the Guilty as Charged podcast YouTube channel. Uh, so this week, I think last week we did a mock draft. Um, there wasn't a lot of news last week, so I just decided to do an interest, uh, interesting exercise with what we knew uh, from free agency and just trying to guess what the Chargers would do in the draft based on that. This week we got news though, um, so that's very good. Heading into next week, which is kind of the official unofficial start of free agency specifically uh, what you're going to see is that even though free agency is not starting next week you're going to see cuts um, so this is going to be for Trey Turner this is going to be for potentially other players who may get cut uh, I think you're going to see that on Monday or Tuesday uh, as Ian Rappaport and Diana Rossini uh, of ESPN and the NFL Network have talked about so I think that's what you're going to see this week uh, and then Tom Telesco did a press conference uh, talking about free agency and the draft and some of the other takeaways on the team. So I want to talk about what we learned in uh, Charger land this week. Uh, so the first thing that's obviously the most important uh, was Adam Schefter's tweet yesterday. This actually <laughs> broke during our live stream. Uh, Adam Schefter tweeted that the Chargers are actively shopping former Pro Bowl guard Trey Turner per source. It looks like he will be traded or released in the near future. He's due $11.5 million this season. Uh, we kind of knew this was coming. Um, Trey Turner is due $11.5 million. There is a $0 uh, dollar cap hit uh, if the Chargers decide to cut him, meaning they save $11 to $12 million dollars immediately as a result of cutting him so if the chargers have 24 million to spend in free agency and the you know 24 million in cap space right now they would jump right up to 35 uh with cut of trey turner um now what adam schefter says in this tweet that caught a lot of people off guard is that the chargers are actively shopping <laughs> former pro bowl guard trey turner I do think the Chargers are looking for a trade, uh, but this is just something that doesn't make sense if you're another team um, talking about trading for Trey Turner, right? Because what the Chargers would expect in return for a trade is maybe a sixth round pick, seventh round pick, something of that nature. But if you're another team, let's say, for example, I'm the Jacksonville GM. And Tom Telesco calls me and says, hey, I know you guys need offensive line help and we have Trey Turner. We're willing to give you access to him uh, before he hits the market. Okay, but here's the problem with that. Trey Turner's performance went down last year. I know that if I'm the Jacksonville GM, for example, I can have Trey Turner for cheaper than $11.5 million next week, right? Uh, and when free agency starts. So it doesn't really make sense for me to pay a pick and on top of that, pay more money than I would have to if I just waited a little bit longer. Now, obviously, if he's a free agent, there's no guarantee that you're going to be the team uh, that gets him when he's available, but that's the chance you're willing to take, right? To me, you're just not going to give up serious draft capital and pay more um, for Trey Turner. So while Tom Telesco probably will look for a deal for him, uh, I, I don't doubt that they, he's looking for that. I just don't think he's going to get it. Um, it would be a different story if maybe we're talking about uh, like the Raiders with Trent Brown right now, right? Where it's like, you know, Trent Brown had uh, the Rona last year, which hurt his season and was also injured, but he's still really high uh, starting offensive lineman when healthy and did play well last year. Uh, with Trey Turner, we saw that even when he was healthy and rehabbed all the way, he didn't look really good <laughs> and look particularly bad. Um, arguably the worst offensive lineman on the team last year. So that's just the issue in terms of shopping Cherry Turner. It's a declining asset that you're asking teams to pay more for and also give up a draft pick, right? So that's why I think Trey Turner is going to be released uh, on Monday or Tuesday, whenever the Chargers cuts start uh, in this uh, Schefter tweet basically confirmed it. Um, so that was the takeaway from Friday, uh, but we kind of already knew Trey Turner was getting cut. So I think the more interesting thing to talk about is uh, uh, <clears throat> Tom Telesco's press conference. So uh, Daniel Popper wrote this on The Athletic, uh, his six takeaways from Chargers GM Tom Telesco's combine news conference. So this is generally what's done before the combine, but uh, obviously, they fielded a lot of non-combine questions uh, from Chargers media and reporters. 
Uh, so, you know, this is usually a, a press conference he has, uh, but it was on Zoom this year, unlike at the actual combine. Uh, all right. So the first takeaway is that a lot of people notice he talked about sort of a softer tone on the offensive line, as Popper notes. Um, you know, so you'll remember in his January 6 press conference, as Popper notes here, Telesco said, we have to get better up front. Uh, and there's a lot of improvement that needs to be um, made in that area. Right. And I mean, I, I think that was an accurate assessment of the season. Um, you know, it, the offensive line was terrible last year. <laughs> there's not many more ways I can say that than what I've said on the show already. Um, and it, none of the personnel has obviously changed since then. And so, uh, you you know, you would say that as, as uh, Popper says here, the assessment on the offensive line hasn't changed. Um, now, uh, Telesco's quote in this press conference, I believe uh, it was on Thursday, he said, quote, let's not forget that we need to add talent amongst the whole football team. We're trying to build a balanced football team. We didn't make the playoffs this year. We were seven and nine. I don't know if we're just the offensive line, uh, sorry, just a better offensive line away from winning a championship. So we're trying to build the whole football team. Uh, so a lot of people took that as Telesco basically walking back his offensive line criticism that he once uh, placed uh, back in that end of season press conference. I didn't really interpret it that way. Personally, I think he was just saying factually, like the offensive line isn't the only thing we need to improve. And that's true. Like you can make the chargers offensive line better by uh, adding pieces. You know, for example, if I copy pasted the chiefs offensive line when healthy and just put all those bodies on the chargers, you know, uh, we're talking about Mitchell Schwartz, Austin Ryder, right? If I gave them Chargers instant upgrades at that position, would they be the AFC favorites? No, right? The Chiefs would still be the AFC favorites, um, and you probably still have the Bills and a couple teams ahead of the Chargers, even if they do this dramatic boost to the offensive line. Now, I don't think that means that uh, Tom Telesco is not going to pursue the offensive line. I think he knows that it has to improve based on his comments at the end of the season, uh, I don't think that this comment means they won't go after a Corey Lindsley. I don't think that this comment means they won't go after offensive linemen in the draft. Um, you know, we'll have to see how it all plays out, but I didn't really personally interpret it as, oh, that means Tom Telesco is not going to improve the offensive line. Um, you know, but I think there were fair criticisms. Uh, I think that uh, Daniel Wade was sort of talking about it on Twitter. He's uh, from Locked On Chargers and he was saying, well, you know, Telesco hasn't made a big improvement on the offensive line in the eight years he's been here. And I think that's a fair criticism, but I don't think that that necessarily means he's not going to try uh, to improve it in the off season this year. Um, but I agree with his general statement that this team is further than a boosted offensive line away from a championship. But obviously I think Telesco knows you do need a better offensive line. Uh, Hunter Henry is over here uh, and Tom Telesco talked about him a little bit in his press conference, uh, based, basically his free agent situation and what they do with him. Telesco said, quote, he falls under the category of things we've done right. You draft a player he develops and turns into a really, really high level tight end for us uh, and a big part of this football team. So our philosophy has been draft, develop and re-sign. Now, can you do that with every single player? You can't not in the salary cap era, and certainly not in an era where we are right now where it's lowered. But that doesn't change how we feel about him, and we know uh, what he means to this football team. And we'll kind of see what our options are. But yeah, he's a big part of the football team, and we just love uh, how he plays the game. He fits what we do in the field, uh, off the field. He's a high-level player. Um, I don't think that, you know, that really gives us any direction on where they're leaning on Henry. Um, I pretty much, I mean, you know, he did admit in this statement where he says, you know, uh, you know, can we re-sign every single one of our draft picks? No. Uh, and when it comes to a second contract, especially when you're talking about the pricier draft picks, you have to make decisions. Um, I don't think there's any part of him that was, you know, uh, obtuse to that, I guess. So we'll see um, what happens with Hunter Henry. I think really the thing to gather from this comment uh, is that you'll notice he says re-sign. You really don't hear him talk about the franchise tag. And the franchise tag was kind of an idea for Henry um, that maybe at some point 
the Chargers uh, would use the franchise tag him uh, on him before the March 9th deadline, therefore securing him for 2021. And then, you know, they would work out a deal later. But I think based on Telesco's comments, it's basically Hunter Henry signs the extension or he walks. Um, and I think that's sort of something I got from it. Um, you know, and uh, it's basically just kind of what he said. The salary cap is going down. The Chargers aren't going to be able to re-sign every player uh, who's a free agent for them this year, you know? So I don't think there was anything that was a big, uh, you know, uh, something, you know, uh, I, I don't think there was a big takeaway. Um, Popper and, and Steven actually said this on the podcast, I believe, or on our live stream yesterday. He thinks that the Telesco press conference makes the Chargers unlikely to overpay for Henry. Um, you know, I didn't really personally interpret it that way. Popper uh, sort of interpreted it that way too. So maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that really um, put a dollar amount on what Telesco is willing to pay for it. I mean, there probably is that value. I just don't think we got what that value is in his press conference. <laughs> it could be as high as 15 million. It could be 10 million. I really don't know uh, from that press conference what it is. Uh, an extension on the table for Mike Williams. Uh, so uh, what he said here is that uh, you want to keep your options open, right? Uh, so you could potentially extend Mike Williams uh, and extending Mike Williams does a few things, right? Uh, it gets him kind of off of that 15.68 million uh, fifth year option this year. So it lowers your cap a little bit and it gives Mike Williams some long-term security. Uh, so you could sign to maybe like a three-year $33 million deal, four-year $44 million deal. So that cap hit doesn't stay as high. And you have some safety for Williams and you're sort of set at wide receiver two for a while, right? But uh, I, yeah, I still think as Popper says here, it's just unlikely for Mike Williams to sign an extension, especially when he can kind of bet on himself and outside of a major injury, he's going to get 10 or 11 million as the base next year anyway. Right. So um, it takes two sides to agree to an extension as Popper said, and I just don't see Williams uh, really giving in when he can bet on himself this year. And then if he has a really good year, that increases what his market is next year, right? So you would be talking about potentially, right, in the neighborhood of, you know, if he plays really well, let's say he has 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, right? That kind of a year probably earns him a 14 or $15 million contract. But if he has a year like he did this year where the production is a little down, I still think he's in line for a 10 or $11 million deal, right? So even though he could get some security, uh, with an extension this year. It's just the thing, like he hasn't suffered many season ending injuries. He's had nicks and knacks here and there, obviously, but his base value is probably pretty protected. So it makes sense to bet on himself and see, you know, how he can do this year. And uh, that will determine sort of how much he's worth right next season. Uh, but his value isn't likely to drop. It's kind of only likely to go up in reality. Uh, cuts are likely. <laughs> I mean, we've been talking about which players are going to get cut for a while and it's, um, it, it's not fun to talk about. I mean, we do talk about it a lot with Trey Turner and Adam Schefter basically confirmed that Trey Turner is going to get cut. Uh, and we'll see what happens to other players. Uh, there are other guys as well. And I, I think Popper points some of these guys out. Um, but cutting these players is the more direct path. The Chargers can save 11.5 million in space if they cut Trey Turner. They save 9.75 million if they cut cornerback Casey Hayward. They save 7.5 if they cut Chris Harris. And they can save 7.9 million if they cut nose tackle Linval Joseph. So that creates a little bit more wiggle room to have more money to be able to spend in the free agency. Um, I sort of wrote this yesterday, but to me, if I had to predict the guys that are going to get cut right now, I would say Trey Turner's, I mean, Schefter already reported it. I would say Casey Hayward is probably going to get cut and we'll get to what he said about the cornerback room later. Uh, and I think Linval Joseph is a potential cut candidate just because of his age. Uh, don't believe that NFL rumors account on Twitter. Uh, there's a ver unverified account on Twitter yesterday that posted the Chargers are planning on cutting Linval Joseph. Uh, don't believe that account. They may cut Linval Joseph, but that account is unverified and doesn't know shit, frankly. Um, so we won't know about an official uh, decision to cut Linval Joseph until someone reliable tweets it.
right? <laughs> I mean, that's basically the nature of the game. Uh, but I think that three cuts you're looking at, I, I think Chris Harris will survive because he does play that slot corner role, can shift to the inside and play the outside corners if needed to. Um, whereas Casey Hayward, if you're shifting him to slot, he hasn't played slot in six years. And I wouldn't say he's as good of a slot corner currently as Chris Harris. So I think if they have to pick one cornerback, they may cut both. But if they're going to pick one, I think they're going to pick Chris Harris over Casey Hayward. Uh, also, you have to factor in his connections with both Ronaldo Hill and Brandon Staley there. So I think the three cuts will be Trey Turner, Casey Hayward, and Linval Joseph. If you add all of those numbers up, what you would approximately get is about, let's see, 11 plus 10 and about eight. So the Chargers effectively save about 29 million in cap space with those moves, about 30 million, right? So that would take their current cap of 24 to about 54 um, million if they make those cuts that I suggested. If they also cut Chris Harris, that would put them at about, uh, yeah, about 60 million. So definitely uh, a lot in the air when it comes to cuts. And I think you're going to see whatever the official salary cap is set at, which we're probably going to find out in the next couple of days, that will definitely affect what the Chargers decide to do, right? I mean, Ian Rappaport was kind of talking about this on the Pat McAfee show uh, where he said, hey, look, if the salary cap is, you know, 180 million or it's 187 million, that makes a big difference, right? We just talked about how Linval Joseph is owed 7.9. So if the salary cap is 7 million lower, that could mean cutting Linval Joseph. If it's 7 million higher, that can mean not cutting, right? So we, we really need to figure out what that value is before we uh, actually project things. Uh, familiar targets and free agency. Uh, so uh, someone asked, uh, I believe in the press conference about, you know, do you want to bring in familiar players with Brandon Staley? So that obviously includes uh, John Johnson, who <laughs> Stephen and Tyler have talked about a lot. That includes Leonard Floyd uh, and some of the other players in free agency, right? Um, Von Miller might hit free agency and Brandon Staley was the uh, linebackers coach in Denver uh, for a, a little bit uh, who has some experience in that Denver environment in general under Vic Fangio. So maybe that's a move. There's a lot of guys I think you can point to with some connections to Staley, but the main two are Leonard Floyd and John Johnson uh, from the Rams who obviously played pivotal roles uh, in the defense this year. So Telesco's quote was, um, you know, is there any advantage or value to bringing in guys that are familiar with Staley's scheme. And Telesco said, there is, uh, Telesco said, sometimes you're comfortable with the players you've uh, had because you know exactly what they can do for you, both on the field and off the field. So you know what you're getting. Um, and yeah, I, I think that they're likely to probably sign one of Leonard Floyd or John Johnson. And as we said, if we have the 55 or 40 million in cap space that we're kind of projecting the charges to have based on what cuts they make, uh, I think that one of them probably ends up in powder blue next season. <laughs> um, and this was kind of the most inflammatory thing Tom Telesco said that a lot of people picked up. Uh, I, I, you know, he was kind of getting frustrated with the questions at this point because the questions were like, Hey, what are you going to do in the draft? Hey, what are you going to do in free agency? And meanwhile, poor Tom Telesco can't really answer those questions because free agency and uh, the draft aren't here yet. And he can't really give up what his strategies are. Um, so that's kind of an interesting take on that. But uh, <laughs> Popper was uh, asked, I, I think Popper was the one who asked this question. Uh, and he, <laughs> he had said, uh, you know, he asked uh, how he feels about the cornerback group. Tom Telesco says, I feel okay. He said, I don't know. What do you want me to say? Um, he added, Michael Davis is a free agent, so we'll see where that goes. But everyone else is there. Um, and Popper kind of picked up, yeah, it's not a ringing endorsement of the cornerback group. Uh, and I think in a way, Tom Telesco did kind of trash the cornerback group a little bit. Um, and when we just talked about how much money they can save by cutting Casey Hayward, cutting Chris Harris, it's a comment that raises your eyebrows a little bit. Um, not necessarily confirmed by any means that they're going to cut either of those guys. But when you talk about, uh, you know, this free agency period being primarily around Michael Davis as your best corner, you know, that, you know, puts a lot of question marks around what Harris or Hayward's roles might be going forward. 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, if they cut one of them, you have to re-sign Michael Davis. <laughs> like that's just the reality. You have to re-sign Michael Davis anyway because he's your best corner now because Casey Hayward is declining and Chris Harris is an older older slot corner. <laughs> like you have no choice but to re-sign Davis. And I, I've said this, and people disagree. I think re-signing Davis is more important than re-signing Hunter Henry, um, specifically just because he's the best cornerback on the team. Uh, pass coverage is really important, and he's got that speed, and he's young, right? <laughs> if you uh, cut Casey Hayward and you lose out on Michael Davis, that's a huge problem going forward, and you're going to have a really rough time with cornerbacks next year. So I think you have to re-sign Michael Davis and probably – spend relatively high draft capital at somewhere between the first and third round uh, on a cornerback, but we'll see what happens there. Um, And that was the big uh, news of the week. Uh, There wasn't really a lot more to talk about. Um, You know, I just kind of want (laughs) to Google the chargers and see. uh, Oh, we did talk. uh, I I don't think we talked about this on the show yesterday, but the chargers signed a kicker. Uh, Nick Novak, uh, I guess, trained this guy, Tristan Viscaino, a little bit, who was a former Bengals kicker. He worked with him, uh, and he was the one who broke the news uh, on um, him signing with the Chargers. So we have some Badgley competition, so that's something to pay attention to. Uh, Viscaino, uh, in his final season, I, I think, in Washington, went 12 for 19. He didn't kick uh, until last year with the Niners. Uh, he made three field goals in a game. Uh, and I think made all of his extra points. So it's a dart throw. Uh, I think Steven tweeted that on Twitter and it's just like, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Uh, But I think the most important thing is just the Chargers are finally bringing in some competition for Michael Badgley. And that is, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, And I personally, I wouldn't just leave it at Tristan Viscaino, whose name I didn't know till two days ago. Um, I would probably bring in an undrafted uh, free agent of some kind, right? Um, and that's something that will be interesting. Uh, oh, I guess we should talk about Von Miller a little bit. Uh, Von Miller has been a guy that we've talked about potentially coming to the Chargers opposite Bosa, uh, and he did have his charges dropped, or there there were no charges filed actually. There were no charge uh, there were no charges filed uh, against him, so that's something that's important to note for his free agency. It may increase his chances of staying in Denver but it would make uh, the case of Tom Telesco signing him if he hits free agency much better because Tom Telesco does go for uh, high character guys, as we know, and he doesn't really deal with guys that have issues off the field. Uh, So yeah, that's it for me from this episode of Bolt Breakdowns. Uh, Go check out my other uh, other videos I've done. Go check out the podcast we've done this week. Go check out the live stream we did yesterday. Uh, It was very fun uh, talking, you know, with you guys. uh, And I apologize for construction going on in my house. Currently, there's no construction, which is why I can record this video. But there might be construction later today. Uh, So, you know, I have to record this video while I can. Uh, Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought of Tom Telesco's press conference. Tell me what you think about the Chargers cutting Trey Turner. Uh, Leave all your thoughts down there. It really helps out the show. Get that YouTube algorithm going. Uh, (laughs) Whenever you guys comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, Hit the bell down there as well, and I will see you guys next week on Bolt Breakdowns.